In yesterday's video, I discussed James Monroe, the fifth president of the United States. Today, I will discuss his successor in office, John Quincy Adams. John Quincy Adams was born to John and Abigail Adams in Braintree, Massachusetts in 1767. There were no schoolmasters in Braintree at the time because of the American Revolution, so he was brought up by and greatly influenced by his patriotic parents. His father, John Adams, would sometimes bring him on his trips to Europe, where he attended a private school in France from 1778 to 1779, and in the Netherlands in 1780, giving him a great understanding of both the French and Dutch languages. Around this time, he also began writing his diary, one of the best resources for learning about this man's life. In 1782, he accompanied his father in Paris, making him an unofficial secretary of the American commissioners at the Treaty of Paris. When John Adams left for London, John Quincy Adams returned to Massachusetts, where he attended Harvard, becoming a lawyer after his graduation. John Quincy Adams struggled to establish a practice, but wrote a series of papers refuting the ideas espoused by Thomas Paine in his books, in his book, sorry, Rights of Man. He also wrote in support of Washington's neutral foreign policy. As a result, George Washington appointed him to be the minister to the Netherlands. Adams sent numerous letters back to America, some of which were read by Washington. Thomas Pinckney, the U.S. minister to Britain, was not able to perform his regular duties, so Adams took charge. In 1796, Washington made Adams a U.S. minister to Portugal, but John Adams later changed his position to Prussia. While in London, he married Louisa, sorry, Louisa Catherine Johnson, an Englishwoman. Despite marrying her in England, his first encounter with her was when he was 12. She had poor health, often suffering from migraines, but she was well-educated, playing the harp and understanding English, Greek, and French literature. They had a rocky marriage. The family declared bankruptcy only weeks after the marriage ceremony. John Quincy Adams was a cold and sometimes depressed man, being considered antisocial by his peers. His wife was said to have actually regretted marrying him, and the two lost three children. Their first child, George Washington Adams, was a gambler, womanizer, and an alcoholic who committed suicide by drowning. And their second child, John Adams II, died from alcohol poisoning. Uh, however, their third son, Charles Francis Adams, brought honor back to the family after being successfully elected to the House of Representatives and later serving as a minister to Britain during the American Civil War. While he was in Berlin, John Quincy Adams negotiated a treaty with Prussia over amity and commerce. After Thomas Jefferson became president, Adams returned to Boston, where he was elected to the Massachusetts legislature and later the U.S. Senate. John Quincy Adams was never a party man, and despite his father being an important Federalist figure, he was frowned upon by Hamiltonians and reactionaries. He supported many actions from Thomas Jefferson and his Democratic Republicans, eventually losing a seat in the Senate. John Quincy Adams attended the Republican cau caucus, where James Madison was nominated for president. When Madison was elected to the presidency, he sent Adams to Russia, where he took careful note of the French invasion of Russia. He remained in Russia when the War of 1812 began. Later on, he became a minister to Great Britain. By 1817, he returned to America to become James Monroe's Secretary of State. <coughs> As Secretary of State, Adams acquired Florida from Spain. He also influenced the Monroe Doctrine, which I discussed in my last video, as well as negotiating the American-Canadian border. After Monroe left office in 1824, some of his most influential cabinet members, John Quincy Adams, John C. Calhoun, and William H. Crawford, all clamored for the office of pre the presidency in the infamous election of 1824. During this same election, Speaker of the House Henry Clay and General Andrew Jackson also ran. Calhoun was later nominated to the vice presidency. By the end, Andrew Jackson had received 99 electoral votes, Adams 84, Crawford 41, and Clay 37. Although it was clear that Andrew Jackson had received the most votes, he had not received a true majority, so the House of Representatives made the final decision. Henry Clay opted to drop out and endorse John Quincy Adams, who won the election and made Clay his Secretary of State. Andrew Jackson and his supporters claimed that a corrupt bargain had taken place and turned John Quincy Adams 
four-year presidency into a four-year campaign for Andrew Jackson, who created the Democratic Party in opposition to the Adams administration. John Quincy Adams spent the rest of his presidency hard at work. He woke up from four to six every morning and would take walks and swim in the Potomac River. Unlike his father, John Quincy Adams was quite physically fit. However, he was not a populist. By even his own standards, he was an aristocrat, which the Democrats strongly opposed. He also proposed the establishment of a national university and a national astronomical obser observatory to further advances in science, which critics views, viewed as a stretch of power. Alongside this, he also proposed the federal government handled the western territories and that the national roads were expanded. However, many of Adams' proposals did not make it through Congress, and in 1828, the bitter Democrats won what won what they believed was rightfully theirs in the first place, the presidency. Andrew Jackson received 178 electoral votes, while J.Q. Adams received only 83. The party of John Quincy Adams, in opposition to Jackson, later became the National Republicans, later unifying with the, the first third party, the anti-Masons, into the Whig party under Henry Clay. John Quincy Adams despised Jackson. When Jackson was awarded an honorary degree at Harvard, he refused to attend the ceremony, stating that he would not be present to witness Harvard's disgrace in conferring its, hi its highest honors upon a barbarian who could not write a sentence of grammar and could hardly spell his own name. After his presidency had ended, Adams retired for a short amount of time before actually being elected to the House of Representatives which is a little backwards, going from Senate to President to House of Representatives. He served in the House for the rest of his life, still aspiring to perhaps take back the White House. As a congressman, he introduced many anti-slavery bills, including a proposed amendment making it so that everyone born after July 4th, 1842, should be born free, and that no new state should be added as a slave state. He also staunchly opposed gag rules, a rule introduced by Southern congressmen that made it so slavery was not to even be discussed in the House. Adams claimed that gag rules were a violation of the First Amendment and refused to be silenced for his abolitionist beliefs. In 1844, his long battle against gag rules ended alongside gag rules themselves as Congress voted against them. Another, achie another achievement he made was when he successfully defended the slaves arrested on the Amistad, eventually winning them their freedom from slavery, against the wishes of President Martin Van Buren. John Quincy Adams also helped to improve the arts and science, helping James Smithson create the Smithsonian Institution. One of the most dramatic periods in his life happened when he eventually died. In the middle of a speech protesting a bill to give every general who fought in Mexico an honorary sword, he suffered from a stroke and collapsed to the Congress floor. Old Man Eloquent, as he was known, died in the Capitol building only days later, leaving behind a legacy of abolitionism. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope you enjoyed. Goodbye.